So a lot of people ask us about our special endo protocol for patients with endometriosis. So we're just going to share that with you today, and I'll give you rationalization for each step. So the first part is that we suppress all of our patients going into the frozen embryo transfer because you want to make that endometriosis as quiet as possible. How do you do that? The studies show that the best method is to use a combination of Depo-Lupron or any Depo-GMRH agonist as well as letrozole, 5 milligrams a day for three months. We then continue the letrozole a few extra days past the 90 days of your Lupron or GMRH agonist. And then we just let the lining start to thicken. In most cases, it will thicken on its own. If it does not thicken, you want to use the lowest amount of estrogen possible. So start with one milligram per day or two milligrams maximum per day. Most patients are ending up on hormone replacement therapy protocols after they take Lupron. It's literally like hitting an off switch to get the endometriosis to go off and then hitting a quadruple on switch because you've now fed it a ton of estrogen after you just robbed it of estrogen. It makes no sense whatsoever. So that is a maniacal approach to doing an embryo transfer. So you want to use a very small amount of estrogen, if at all. While you're doing that, we strongly advocate for five supplements that can naturally help with inflammation. So for endo patients, that's NAC, N-acetylcysteine, resveratrol, alpha-lipoic acid, curcumin, and coenzyme Q10, all clinically shown to have decreased inflammation and to be helpful in patients with endometriosis. When you get your lining to 8 millimeters, you're going to start double progesterone. So that's vaginal progesterone and injectable. Why? Because progesterone has a systemic effect where it goes into your bloodstream and the local effect where it leaves the ovary and gets right into the uterus from a pericrine uh, blood supply. So you want to mimic that by taking a vaginal progesterone and by taking injectable progesterone, which is going to go into your blood supply. When you're checking for levels, which you should, the levels need to be high. So we reviewed a study which showed that your level should be around 40 nanograms per mil or around 150 mil, na, sorry, nanomoles per liter. And so you want to get a very high level of progesterone because there is progesterone resistance in patients with endometriosis. The final part of this that's critical is that you want an immune protocol. Why? Because endometriosis inflames your immune system. Your immune system is overactive and it's looking to be on the attack. How do we calm it down? Steroids like prednisone, intralipids, and a drug called tacrolimus or serolimus, which helps to reduce the T helper 1 to T helper 2 ratio and cause more T helper 2 cells to be present, which are better for you and they're the more happy accepting immune cells, whereas TL1 is the more attack aggressive immune cells. That is the protocol that we use for our endometriosis patients. The only other thing is that if your uterus is retroverted, which means flipped over backwards, a conventional embryo transfer where they're doing a transabdominal ultrasound does not typically give you a great view, and they should be able at your center to provide you with a transvaginal ultrasound guided embryo transfer. If they can't, maybe it's time to look somewhere else. So that's our under protocol. Hope that helps you out. If you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We will happily share more details with you if needed.